Welcome. Today we're embarking on an exciting journey through the world of financial data analysis, and you're invited to join us every step of the way. Hi, I'm Ava, and in this video tutorial, we'll dive into the fascinating realm of market data, leveraging the powerful API provided by OANDA. We'll start by guiding you through the process of connecting to OANDA's API, ensuring you have the keys to unlock a treasure trove of real-time and historical market data. Once connected, we'll explore the variety of data available at our fingertips. We'll walk you through the process of fetching, understanding, and processing this data, making it ready for analysis. Next, we'll create a powerful function that returns a neatly organized data frame using Pandas. This data frame will include essential market metrics such as date, open, high, low, and close prices, serving as the cornerstone for our analysis. To bring our data to life, we'll employ the Plotly library to create interactive charts. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have hands-on experience in fetching, processing, and visualizing financial data using Python. Whether you're looking to bolster your trading strategy, develop your data science skills, or simply satisfy your curiosity about financial markets, this video will provide you with valuable insights and skills. So, if you're ready to unlock the potential of financial data with us, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and let's get started. Don't forget to like this video and drop your questions or insights in the comments below. Your journey into the world of financial data analysis begins now. The code here is very similar to the connecting to OANDA's instrument endpoint section in the Fetch Tradable Instruments video in our previous video. Since we went into great detail in that video, we will keep this explanation short and sweet. We start by bringing in tools that we need. Think of it as grabbing tools from a toolbox before starting a project. OS helps us interact with the operating system, like finding files or reading environment variables, hidden settings. Requests is used to ask for data from websites or APIs, a way for computers to talk to each other over the internet. JSON helps us work with JSON data, which is a common format for sending and receiving data on the web. Account ID is like your username for accessing Oanda's API, which lets us get financial data. API token is like a secret password, but more secure, that proves who you are when asking for data. We get it in a way that keeps it secret from others who might see the code. This if statement checks if we have our secret password, API token. If not, it stops and says, no API token found. If we do have it, it says we're good to go. Next, we set up the base URL, instrument and candles endpoint. This gets put all together in the variable named URL using an F string. Imagine you're asking for specific financial data. Here, we're setting up where to find it and what we're looking for, in this case, daily price data for US dollar to Canadian dollar, the exchange rate between the US dollar and Canadian dollar. If you're unsure about the queries, granularity, price, and count, please watch our first couple videos in the OANDA's playlist as we go over them in detail. However, after this code review, I will do a quick refresher on the queries. Now, we're sending our request. We include our secret password in the headers. It's like showing ID. Request get is like saying, please give me the data from this specific place. After we ask for the data, we check if everything went smoothly. Status code equals 200 means okay. If so, we take the data, which is in JSON format, a standard web format for data, and print it out nicely so we can understand it. If not, we say it failed and show the error code. Here is a quick refresher on the query parameters. If you do not require this, simply skip ahead to the next section. You can find this information on OANDA's website at developer.oanda.com. These are the options you can specify to tailor the data you receive. They are added to the URL after a question mark and separated by an and symbol. The main parameters include price, the type of prices to retrieve. Options include M, midpoint, B, bid, and A, ask. If not specified, M is the default. This is why we didn't specify in our endpoint. Granularity, the time frame for each candlestick. Options range from seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, etc., to minutes, M1, M5, etc., hours, H1, H4, etc., 
and even up to a day a month. Count the number of candlesticks to return. The default is 500 and the maximum is 5,000. In our endpoint, we left it at the default of 500. From N2, the start and end times for the data range, specified in Unix timestamp format, or RFC 3339. These are optional and can be used to fetch data for a specific time period. Daily alignment, alignment time zone, and weekly alignment are advanced options for aligning the start of candles to specific times or days. Okay, with the refresher out of the way, let's continue. We now need to run our code and ensure we get the data we have requested. As we scroll up to the top, we can see we got a good amount of data back for us to explore and process. Once again, we got a tremendous amount of data back which got truncated. Let's click on the three dots. This will open the data in a new window. We see that in our return data, we get back a dictionary that has three key value pairs. First being instrument, which is USD CAD, then granularity, which is the time frame of the candles, in our case daily was returned. Lastly, we have our candles data, which is a list of dictionaries. Let's extract the data and store into variables. We named the variables instrument, granularity, and candles data. Before processing the candle data, let's run our code and do a simple print check to view the instrument and granularity. Just go ahead. If you're coding along with me, smash that like button. Oh, I mean the play button. If all is good, we'll see a simple print statement with the instrument and time frame. Perfect. Let's move on to processing the candle data. We begin by defining a function called process candles, designed to take candlestick data and prepare it for analysis. Just a moment. I forgot to mention we need a very important library. This library is called pandas, which you can see we have imported at the top. This is one of the most used libraries in Python, and we too will be utilizing it quite a bit in the future. After importing, let's jump back into the inner workings of the function. First, we initialize our data frame from the candlestick data. This step converts our raw data into a structured format, enabling us to manipulate and analyze it with ease. Each candlestick contains mid prices, open, high, low, and close. We expand these nested values into separate columns for detailed analysis. This expansion allows us to directly access each price point. To streamline our data, we remove the complete and volume columns. These fields are not required for our current analysis, allowing us to focus on the price information. Accuracy in data types is crucial. We convert the open, high, low, and close prices to floats, ensuring our calculations are precise. This conversion facilitates numerical operations on the data. We convert the time column to a daytime object, enabling time series analysis. This transformation allows us to index, slice, and dice the data based on time intervals. For clarity and accessibility, we rename the time column to date and set it as the data frame index. With the processing complete, we return the data, which is now ready for us to view with an interactive chart. In the last video, I showed you how to create a slideshow in Jupyter. Let's put this skill into action and view our function running while we process the data live. You'll notice that I have inserted blocks of code for viewing. This will allow us to watch each step as we run through the function. As we scroll down, you can see each area I have inserted the blocks of code. Let's hit that play button and ensure our cell is ready to go. We got a green arrow, so everything is good to go. Let's start our slideshow and enjoy.
And there we have it. Our data was processed, and we have a clean data frame ready to chart. Let's move on now to viewing our data in an interactive chart. We start off by importing the Plotly library. This line imports the graph objects module from the Plotly library as Go. Plotly is a popular interactive graphing library for Python that allows for the creation of complex plots in an easy to use manner. The graph object submodule contains the definitions for the different types of plots that Plotly can create, including the candlestick plot used here. We define our function named plot candlestick that takes three parameters. Candles DF, a pandas data frame containing the data for the candlestick chart. It is expected to have columns named open, high, low, and close, which represent the opening, highest, lowest, and closing prices for a financial instrument over a specific time period. Width, an optional integer parameter specifying the width of the plot. It defaults to 1,200 pixels. Height, an optional integer parameter specifying the height of the plot. It defaults to 600 pixels. A figure object is created by calling go.figure. This object will serve as the container for the plot. This part of the code adds a candlestick chart to the figure. It uses the candlestick class from the graph objects module, specifying the x, open, high, low, and close values from the data frame. The x parameter is set to the data frame's index, which typically represents time. This part customizes the appearance and functionality of the plot. It sets the chart title, the y-axis title, and hides the x-axis title. It also applies the Plotly Dark template for a dark background theme, disables the range slider beneath the x-axis, and applies the specified width and height to the figure. Finally, the show method of the figure object is called to display the plot. This will open up a new window or inline display, depending on the environment, showing the candlestick chart. Great, good job. All we need to do now is hit that play button and watch our interactive chart come to life. Perfect, we are all ready for our next video where we can pull the order book data and plot support and resistance areas on this wonderful interactive chart. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive journey through mastering candlestick charts for financial data visualization. We hope this guide has provided you with valuable insights and tools to enhance your analysis of financial markets. Remember, the world of finance is dynamic and constantly evolving, so continue to practice, experiment with different datasets, and refine your analysis techniques. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider sharing it with your network to help others in their financial analysis journey. Stay tuned for more tutorials and guides to further your knowledge in finance, data analysis, and beyond. Until next time, happy analyzing!